What's up guys, it's Tommy here and I'm absolutely fuming that Liverpool blew their title chances. We haven't lost for 14 months and then we lose two home games at Anfield after being unbeaten for 14 months in the space of four days. And Liverpool created so many chances I couldn't believe my eyes how the ball just didn't want to go in. Everybody is cursed, it looks like, in this Liverpool team because no matter what we tried, no matter who was in front of goal, we just couldn't score. I mean, Darwin Nunez has missed so many big chances and today from five yards out he blasts it into the goalkeeper's knee and let me know how do you feel, how do you see the title race going because I think we are done. I don't see Man City dropping like three or four points and Arsenal dropping three or four points and I also don't see Liverpool winning six games in a row after the absolute disaster of a disaster class of finishing in the, the Atalanta game and in the Crystal Palace game. This was a, of course a much better performance than the Atalanta game and on another day Liverpool scored four goals because we had 21 shots again created 2.87 xg almost 3 xg 70 percent possession and we just couldn't score it's absolutely unbelievable salah was uh, absolutely awful in this game he had one big chance which tyrick mitchell or not, not sure what's his first name mitchell blocked it on the line soboslai came on at half time he was also pretty good he squared it to Diogo Jota. Jota has a, you know, the goalkeeper is not in goal and Jota just needs to get it past the two defenders and he shoots into the defender. Also in the first half, Luis Diaz, brilliant bicycle kick uh, shot which Henderson miraculously saved. And Crystal Palace deserves huge credit because tactically they were set up so, so well, so resolute. I felt Jefferson Lerma was absolutely everywhere. He creates, he cleared so many balls. But Liverpool absolutely are dreadful defensively. In 25 years, this is the first time in 25 years where we conceded nine Premier League games in a row. It was the last time, it was 1999. And then before that, it was 1996. No season until today where Liverpool conceded nine games in a row. And I can't believe that for the first time in front of fans, Liverpool lose back-to-back -back home games on the Jurgen Klopp. I think the reason, the main reason is the Liverpool players are too nervous, too anxious. They want to, to send Jurgen Klopp off into the sunset with the Premier League title so much that they are like this so tense in front of goal. If you relax, if you are calm, if you are cool, if you are composed, there is no way that you miss this many chances. I think every single Liverpool player is just maybe a bit too emotional, maybe a bit too irrational. There were so many examples where Liverpool with a little bit more composure, Darwin Nunez, five yards out, he blasts it into the goalkeeper's uh, knee, when with a little bit more composure he picks out one of the corners and it's a goal. Uh, Diogo Jota was great when he came on. Uh, also, I feel for Conor Bradley who had to be substituted after it looked like maybe a broken ankle or a fractured ankle or fractured bone. Um, you know, Vatarendo, I don't want to be too harsh on him. He had a terrible first half, but he's probably exhausted from playing too much football. And that's, I think, another main reason why Liverpool just deflated like a balloon. We had eight or nine or ten injuries throughout the whole season. And that stretches every player physically, mentally, emotionally. You always have to perform. You can't rest. You can't rotate as much. Jurgen Klopp can't rotate as much because of having eight, nine, ten injured players. Sometimes players had to play out of position. Joe Gomez had to play defensive midfield, right back, center back, left back. Uh, also, Trent Oxford came back from after two months. Alisson came back after two months and uh, you know Konate was absolutely awful. Defensively he was marking no one when Eze scored the winning goal ultimately. We were so wide open sometimes at the back and then you know Van Dijk slips. He, he, I've never seen Van Dijk slip in a crucial situation like that before and that would have haunted Liverpool fans for a long time but thank goodness Andy Robertson got back and cleared the ball literally on the line. The ball was already halfway into the goal when Andy Robertson cleared it, but the ball was on the line, so it wasn't a goal. And in the second half, there was another 
incident. Well, Crystal Palace on another day could have scored three goals, but Liverpool should have scored four or five goals with the amount of chances that we created. Cody Gakpo and Diogo Jota came on and I felt maybe taking off Luis Diaz was a, a, a bad move because Luis Diaz alongside Andy Robertson looked like Liverpool's two best players. Andy Robertson was absolutely immense. He was bombing up and down the wing. He was back to his absolute best. And I think uh, Trenok Swanold looked a little bit uh, rusty as well, understandably after being two months out. That's, that's what I mean. Some Liverpool players have no rhythm. Some Liverpool players have to play all the time. Like McAllister looked exhausted. Endo looked exhausted. They had to play all the time because of the other injuries. Trenok Swanold, Alisson, Jota coming back after two month injuries. Not not ideal. They lack rhythm. They lack, uh, you know, match sharpness. But still, Liverpool should have scored. Curtis Jones was one on one with the goalkeeper, literally one minute or a half a minute after Alisson made a miraculous save from, uh, I think, a uh, Crystal Palace attacker. Not sure it was Eze or or. Uh, Olise or Mateta, I think it was Mateta, absolutely amazing save by Alisson. And then literally half a minute later, Curtis Jones is through on goal. All he has to do is just hit the target, because the goalkeeper is just standing in the goal. It came out a little bit, but not too much, he wasn't rushing out, and Curtis Jones puts it wide. Absolutely unbelievable miss. The whole ground I felt through the television was deflated, Anfield was like this. If that doesn't go in, then nothing will go in. And they were right, nothing was going in for Liverpool. It looks like nobody has any luck in front of goal. In fact, we have the worst luck in front of goal because against Atalanta, we had more than two XG. Against Crystal Palace today, we had three XG. We should have scored at least three goals. But if you count the big chances, probably even more. Absolutely unbelievable. Darwin Nunez again missed a big chance. We missed four big chances. Uh, Crystal Palace also created four big chances, to be fair to them, from eight shots. So defensively Liverpool are not great. We can see it in every game and that's a huge problem because now that is paired on the other end with we can't score and that's a recipe for disaster. This season is so weird because for the first like 80% uh, of the season Liverpool were actually brilliant. We were you know fighting on all fronts. We went all the way to the League Cup final, we won it. We went to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup we were very unlucky because against Man United, if we take our chances, we easily knock them out. If we score the free one uh, in normal time, they are out and we would be in the FA Cup semi-finals. That started it, I think. That Man United FA Cup game started it. When Liverpool started, Liverpool players started to doubt to themselves in front of goal because that's when we were so comfortable against Man United. We were a little bit too lax in front of goal, too comfortable, too nonchalant, too... I don't want to call it lazy. Too comfortable is a good word for it, I think. Liverpool were too comfortable against Man United and that started it. Because since then, we haven't been as sharp in front of goal. Yes, we beat uh, Brighton, but we went one year down in that game. We beat Sheffield United, uh, but it was 1-1 for a long time. And then, of course, the other Premier League game, Man United away. Liverpool were, uh, you know, cruising. In the first half, we had 15 shots, and then we give the ball away, and Man United scored, two won the goals, and we were chasing the game. And yes, we equalized through a penalty again in that. So let's let's actually count the chances. Liverpool created 28 shots against Man United, 3.6 xG. We only scored two. And both goals were from set pieces. So Liverpool haven't scored from open play in three games in a row, which is the worst run. So we had 28 shots against Man United. We had 19 shots against Atalanta. And we had 21 shots against Crystal Palace. And we haven't scored from open play in all three of them. Because in, against Man United we scored from, a, I think, a set piece and a penalty kick, which is also a set piece, kind of. But this is now, honestly, uh, just so deflating because... If you would flip the season over and let's see we started the season like we played for the past uh, month. So if we start the season like we played against Man United in the FA Cup and uh, you know and uh, Atalanta and Crystal Palace where we create loads of chances, we missed a lot of them, we draw and lose some games, but then gradually over the season we improve and if we finish the season on fire and let's say we finish third after climbing up the table, the Liverpool players would feel totally different. The Liverpool fans would feel totally different. But because we started the season so, so well, 
we went unbeaten at home until April and we were in all competitions until the middle of March. It feels so different because Liverpool were talking about who the quadruple, we were chasing it, we were trying everything, but Liverpool constantly had seven, eight, nine, ten injured players and that takes its toll and maybe that toll is now being paid by Liverpool because some players look exhausted, some players lack rhythm, some players lack match sharpness and some players just lack totally like the finishing composure. Darwin Nunez looks like the Darwin Nunez of season one in the past three games while he still has uh, in terms of the top five leagues he's the fifth best attacker I can't believe I'm saying this but Darwin has, uh, is just has no luck in front of goal and you know you can carry one or two attacking players like that but if you, that's your whole team that we just can't score consistently like big chance after big chance after the big chance the players will start doubting themselves and uh, you get even more anxious even more nervous and the Liverpools are trying too hard they are they want it so much they want to send Jurgen Klopp off with the Premier League title so much that it it is now overboiled to the point where Liverpool are too anxious, too nervous uh, and not composed enough, not cool enough, not calm enough. The best strikers have ice in their wings when they are scoring goals. Mo Salah should be that player. He's a seasoned professional. He has been there, done it. But after his injury, he went from 22% chance conversion rate to 8%. Or now maybe even below that. It was 8% before this game. So now it's maybe even 7, 7.5%. That's a massive drop off. And when your best player, your best goal scorer, even Salah is stumbling on the ball. He can't hit the target. He's shooting over the bar. And then Darwin Nunez can't uh, score for many games now. It seeps through the team. Everybody is getting more nervous when Salah is scoring. And of course, when your back line is leaking goals, Liverpool went behind 21 times in 51 games. And yes, we came back a lot of times to draw or win. Liverpool are the comeback kings. But if you literally go behind in almost half of your games, that will catch up with you sooner or later. Because you will, you will hit a run when your strikers hit a dry spell. And that's what happened to Liverpool. All of our strikers have hit a dry spell at the same time. You know, usually how it goes, every striker has a dry spell. Even the best, like Mo Salah, has a dry spell during the season where five or six games he isn't scoring. But it's okay if your other players like Darwin Nunez, Gakpo, Luis Diaz, Jota, if they are scoring goals, it's okay for one player to hit a dry spell. But when literally all of your attack, maybe except Luis Diaz, but he was never a prolific goal scorer uh, um, in the first place, when all of your attackers hit a dry spell and when, uh, you know, your reliable players like McAllister, Endo, they are exhausted. Bajetic has been injured all season, so we couldn't rotate Endo properly. McAllister had to play sometimes in defensive midfield. Now that Endo is playing regularly, he's playing in attacking midfield. But because Liverpool have been injured, having uh, so many injured players in midfield, we can't rotate McAllister, we can't rest him enough. And he has to play every game. And it looks like he's exhausted. Endo looks he's ex like he is exhausted. Endo had to be substituted. So overall, Liverpool just ran out of ran out of steam because of this many injuries, because of being too nervous, too anxious, not calm enough, and also lacking quality. Probably the bottom line is this Liverpool squad is still in the rebuild phase. They just were perfectly hiding it for six months uh, with. Uh, incredible performances and Jurgen Klopp I feel sorry for him because it's not fitting to his Liverpool tenure that this season is going to fizzle out it looks like because yeah I just can't see Liverpool going now on a six game winning run when we can't even score a goal never mind win a game <laughs> at this point we have to go to Atalanta in this form I mean you know what now the pressure is off the pressure is off Liverpool because now it looks like the Europa League is gone. So let's just go to Atalanta and let's try and win the game and let's see what happens. And then in the Premier League, the title race is pretty much over for Liverpool. Everybody will write Liverpool off. The fans will not expect Liverpool to do anything. So let's just go to Fulham, try to win that and let's see what happens. Uh, let's just try to score a goal 
in the first place. That's where I would start. It's absolutely unbelievable how we have arrived at this point. Like we were top of the Premier League before the Man United game and now we will probably be in third place. Yeah, we are in third place. Even if Arsenal lose to Aston Villa, we will be in third place. In two game weeks, we dropped five points and in a title running, that's absolutely crucial. To drop five points in two games is, is massive in this title race when there are so little margins from all the teams. And uh, yeah, I just, I just, I'm lost for words. What else to say about this Liverpool team, about this season? I just hope that uh, that next season will be better. And Michael Edwards will need to be ruthless. We need a defensive midfielder to back up Walter Endo, who is actually better than Endo. And Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, they are good, young, talented squad players, but they shouldn't be starting for Liverpool. We need another signing like Sobosley and McAllister in terms of that quality. I think we need another one. And uh, and also we need another fast striker because Salah is not as fast as before and we have Darwin Nunez and Luis Diaz but we need another really really fast electric striker that's my opinion let me know what is yours in the comments below thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this have a nice day see you later goodbye